I'd like to thank you first of all, Harry, uh, for your great work and uh, your efforts and for obviously taking the time to, to have a chat with us. Uh, the first question I'd like to ask you, uh, like obviously, what is the, you've been there for a few days, probably a week, what is the current situation at this stage? Uh, is there any signs of situation improving at all? There are signs of the situation improving in as much that the air raids uh, and naval uh, shelling of the strip has quietened down significantly by about 60 to 80 percent in comparison to previous hours earlier today and yesterday. So there is improvement in that respect. However, some analysts are saying that that is a quiet before the storm. As 75,000 Israeli soldiers have been put on alert uh, in preparation for a ground invasion. Um, there are more details regard regarding that ground invasion possibility. Palestinian resistance fighters have said that that is unlikely to happen because they can so successfully uh, repel uh, an attempt at invading the Gaza Strip, which is Palestinian territory under international law. If Israel was to invade the territory militarily, it would become uh, an even more obvious occupying force would be subject to things like the Geneva Convention, which it usually breaks uh, on a routine basis in the West Bank, for example. So that would change, uh, that, would change that situation. So we don't know what's going to happen in terms of a ground invasion. And in the last one hour, things have quietened down, thank God, for Gaza. Mm. All right. Uh, do you think, Ari, in any way, obviously people have been talking about this is about the elections that are coming up in Israel. Uh, other thing I was thinking as well, like, would you think actually is there any relation to the fact that the United Nations in a couple of weeks time they're going to choose on a, or decide rather on the statehood of the state of Palestine, on the possible state of Palestine? In 13 days on November 29th, it's meant to be that there will be this, this, this uh, statehood attempt. I don't see that as a massive uh, relevancy because I think this works in the favor of the Palestinian people by bringing to the world's attention Israel's obviously uh, very, very basic and obvious crude, uh, unjust, unjust uh, and, and disproportionate reckless treatment of the Palestinian people. And so I think that most people in the world are well-natured and can see that this is wrong. Um, and I think, therefore, that actually strengthens the Palestinian cause and acceptance of the Palestinian cause and solidarity for them amongst the world and therefore should uh, tip to some extent the balance towards the Palestinians' cause with respect to this UN statehood uh, bid push to get Palestine, pa Palestinian territories recognized as a state. I'd like to add one caveat to that, to though. There's a lot of Palestinians who don't actually respect and support that statehood bid. Why? The statehood bid uh, seeks to get the uh, United Nations and the world to clarify that Palestine is a state based on 25% of the historic Palestinian homeland that existed unilaterally, uh, you know, that was self-determinating 64, 65 years ago before the mm -hmm. the catastrophe that was the creation of state, uh, creation of Israel, of the Israeli state for the Palestinian people. So there are a lot of Palestinians, indeed most, I would assert, in Gaza who actually don't support a two-state solution. They want the whole place to go back to being called Palestine, where Muslims, Jews, Christians, and others can live, uh, cohabit peacefully together. But they reject this notion um, that a two-state solution uh, is a just uh, solution to the current injustice. They see it broadly as an injustice solving an injustice. Okay. Uh... And talking obviously about the humanitarian situation there, you know, uh, there's one and a half million people living in Gaza. I heard reports you saying early on that the Ministry of Health uh, is reporting shortages of uh, medication. What's the, do you mean, uh, humanitarian situation at this current moment? Uh, obviously, it's been an ongoing problem, but uh, what's the situation right now? On a, on a normal week, the humanitarian situation is bad enough. Uh, that is because the Gaza Strip has been besieged for a few years now since mm -hmm. it was democratically elected. And so the humanitarian situation is normally great, but over 60% of the population, excuse me, are relying on uh, aid handouts just to survive so they do not starve to death. 
And so things are getting uh, more serious, obviously, as uh, more state terrorism is inflicted on the Palestinian people. What do I mean by state terrorism? I mean the Israeli Air Force and Israeli Navy recklessly and disproportionately targeting one of the most densely populated places on Earth, the Gaza Strip, killing children, elderly men, and pregnant women in these last three days. That's what I mean by state terrorism. And so there are electrical blackouts, uh, intermittent service of uh, cellular connectivity, mobile phone signals, etc., uh, as well as internet. And much of the Gaza Strip, much of the Gaza Strip is subject to electrical blackouts and simply light blackouts, even uh, those areas that usually run generators. So there is a serious humanitarian situation in this respect. Looking at the more grave humanitarian situation with health as a result of uh, this Operation Pillar of Cloud, we're seeing that uh, Gaza hospitals are totally overburdened. There are not many of them, there are not enough of them already as it is before wars are launched on this a third world population here in Gaza. But we heard within one hour of this operation being launched, which was just before sunset on November 14th, it was launched within one hour of that time. The main hospital here in Gaza said that there was a, an emergency situation that they were already unable to deal with the influx of casualties. Uh, and so that is the humanitarian situation. It's getting graver and graver. They're running out of fuel to uh, power the generators to power electricity, lights and equipment in the hospitals. They're running out of beds. The in intensive care unit of one of the biggest hospitals here uh, a few hours ago said that they're running out of beds. And so this is the, the image of the humanitarian situation with respect to their health uh, provision. Okay, um, pretty bad. I can see things. Surely, it must be really, really terrible situation. Uh, Harry, uh, just as a, a last question, uh, I heard that you obviously BBC has been interested in interviewing you, and they've done so. Uh, the question I want to ask you: do, do you think that this time around, uh, mainstream media are actually doing a fair job covering the situation in Gaza? I've been interviewed now by five international news organizations, including the BBC, and to be honest with you, the worst one in terms of producing balance, even if balance was due, which is not due because there is an oppressor and an oppressed people, is the BBC, which is meant to be the stronghold of balance in the Western world's journalistic efforts. In my opinion, in my personal judgment, having looked at their coverage, it's the least balanced uh, in providing coverage of Operation Pillar of Cloud. It has people in Tel Aviv and Jerusalem constantly feeding the Israeli narrative point on view. It doesn't have anyone in Gaza giving any live coverage at all. That's why they had to get me on Skype to actually give them some live information. I mean, it really is. Uh, I mean, it's, it is actually almost comedic if it didn't end up resulting in more Gazans being killed and injured because the world doesn't know what is going on here. And it is an absolute... Um, moral shambles that we have ended up with media of like this time, um, which is supposedly to most people quality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, you know, it's thanks to, to people like you, you know, obviously, that we, we managed to get information. And obviously, we all, you know, quite uh, grateful for that, uh, for your great work. Uh, Harry, uh, thanks very much for talking to Occupy News Network. And uh, in the name of the team, uh, thank you for your efforts. And uh, hopefully you can continue safe and doing the great job you're doing. Thanks. Well, a message, a last message for me, if I may. Thank you for your efforts, and thank you for the interview. Thank you for caring about what's going on halfway across the world and trying to do something about it, educationally addressing the information uh, unbalance. And thank you for um, being an activist to, to all of you and your supporters. Thank you. Um, and keep the struggle going for justice worldwide. Thank you.